Today we're going to go and meet a gentleman, his name is Hans, that's all I know about him. I spoke to him on the telephone and uh, he has a 1930 custom hot rod. Hello everybody, welcome to Classic Car Chit Chat. My name is Kevin. Um, thank you again for watching and subscribing and, and joining me as I meet other car lovers, uh, kind of like myself. Um, you can see on the back of my car, I've got my England flag attached to my vehicle. It is Euro 2020 right now. It's, we're a year behind, but better than nothing, big England fan. So um, today we're going to go and meet a gentleman. His name is Hans. That's all I know about him. I spoke to him on the telephone and uh, he has a 1930 custom hot rod uh, and I thought you would enjoy taking a look at that and why he loves the car so much and uh, so I thought today we would take a drive go meet uh, Hans take a look uh, and a tour of his car maybe go on a mini cruise COVID style and um, thank you for joining so hop in let's go for a drive and let's take a look at this 1930 hot rod Hans, tell me about this car. Oh, it's a 1930 Ford Model A Coupe, 400 small block Chevy, 400 turbo transmission, and a GM 10 bolt rear end sitting on a custom frame. Did you build this car? I did. It took from me- From the ground up? From the ground up. What was the chassis on this car? What there was, was no chassis when I bought the, uh, I just bought a body, uh, an empty body that I, uh, was able to get out of Saskatchewan, had it shipped to me here in Ontario, and started building a frame from there. My goodness. Put a Mustang II front end in it, rack and pinion steering. As you can see, it's got the 32 grill, the shell, and the dropped headlight bar is all from a 1932. Where did you find all the parts then? You just kind of online? Like you just kind of... Uh, most of the parts came from a place called Eckler's down in uh, Florida. Okay. And they deal specifically with the old Model A's uh, from 19, basically 1920s all the way up to 1936, 37. So, so how many horsepower is this? Uh, I'm really not sure. We've never had it on a dyno machine to figure right. out how much horsepower it is, but it's too much power for this car. <laughs> the car is way too light for the amount of power that I have in it. How long have you been working on the car then? It took me two years to get it roadworthy, to get it on the road. Yeah. And um, just about 8,300 hours worth of, worth of labor. 8,300. That's correct. Wow. Put a custom fuel cell in the trunk, a whole bunch of stuff in there. So let me ask you this, this car originally, uh, what was the engine size when it was built? Like what was it intended for? The original engine size at the time that it was built was a straight four cylinder engine. On the yeah, front of it, yeah, it's about the size of your MG engine, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little bit shorter, but it, uh, it had a crank handle on the front. It was only a maximum of about 40 to 44 horsepower at the time. Right. Gotta take it. Check inside? Sure, yeah. Yeah, you can open the door handle there if you want. Wow. So the originals would have been a two-seater as well, I take it? That's correct, yeah. The only difference now is that I've made the, uh, made the back end of it into a trunk rather than a uh, rumble seat. Right. Originally, the trunk lid opened this direction, and you would stand up here on the running board onto a puck that was right here, yeah. and the handle was to help you get into the rumble seat in the back. I remember seeing videos of things yeah. like that. So yeah. now it's more practical for me. For sure. Uh, if I was, you know, my gas tank is directly behind the seats okay. up in behind here instead of where Ford had it up front. Yeah. And it's just too hard to try and get in there with a gas pump to fill it up with the gas. So it's easier at this point to have a trunk on it. It's much more convenient. A lot of guys back in those days, they would actually take the rumble seat out and flip the trunk lid over and turn oh, it into right. a trunk, okay. yeah. So. so the color is matte black. When they originally were made, they were all black anyway, correct? 
Uh, no, they came in, I think, uh, five colors. Oh, yeah. You could okay. get white, blue, green, uh, burgundy color. There was a goldy yellow color, a butternut color. Nice. There were a few different options available, but for the people that were going cheap, cheap, black was the way to go. Wow. And I kind of like the flat black look on it. It keeps it looking, you know, sort of back in those days. It keeps it that antique right look, on. you know. It does. It but does. all the doors open and close just as they did in the day. The wiper I see is at the top there. Yes, there's so only the one wiper. would have had the wiper on the top. Yeah, the, top. the original one was a vacuum operated wiper that oh, ran right. off of the engine. And because of the cam that I have in this engine, I don't have a whole lot of vacuums. So I opted to put an electric wiper in there and it works. It's just the lines on this car is extraordinary. Just the way it curves. Oh yeah. Well, no, I love the I love the body style of it. It's a it's a timeless piece, that's for sure. What about the uh, the ornament here? That ornament's got a neat story behind it. Um, Ford went through many many prototypes looking for some kind of a fancy hood ornament to put on the front of his car. Right. And in the end, um, the story goes that Ford, from what I understand, liked to go hunting every Sunday, and he wanted people to to uh, associate the hood ornament with something that he really liked to do. And he used to go quail hunting. No. And the quails, when you shot off a gun in a marsh, all the quails would go off yeah. really fast. Right. So he wanted people to associate it being very quick. So he settled on the flying quail, and that's what that is on the front. This is an original, from an original mold. There's a gentleman in Florida that's around 90 years old that was pouring these. And uh, I had the opportunity to get two of them before he retired. So I bought both of them that I could get. That's amazing. Now I have to take that off in the winter time when I put the cover on it because if the cover flops around with the wind, it's the beak bad. is so sharp on it it rips the cover. <laughs> so I actually bought a flat cap like this thing, just to, keep just, it to just to you know, in the, the yeah. when the fall comes, I change it out and I put the regular cap on it. This actually isn't the rad cap anymore. It's just an ornament on the hood. My rad cap is actually on the top of my aluminum radiator oh, there. Okay. Got it. But in the back in those days, you could get it with the quail. Or you could, which was the actual radiator cap. There were the parts that came with it, okay. so that you can snap it onto an actual radiator. Very nice. um, or you could get what was called a moto meter, which stood up about this high. It was a little bit of a different shape, but it actually had a thermometer in the middle of it, so that the driver could tell if the engine was really? overheating wow, from looking at the else. moto meter. That's something else. Yeah. But today, that's not really practical. I've got a gauge in the car that tells me how hot it's getting. So. What about the headlamps? Like, look at the size of these things. Yeah. Is this the, like the original size would have been something this big? Yes. Um, the original lenses that were on the car, I have the original ones at home for it. These are these are new uh, reproduction lights, but they are licensed under Ford. The emblems are stamped into the top here. Um, these particular ones are off of a 2829. And the reason I went with these is because these are more of a bullet style. Right. They're more of a bullet shape, which was what I was looking for. Beautiful. The original ones that I have at home are still in excellent condition, but they're more of a dog bowl. They're very flat rounded on the back. They're not a bullet style. Because I have LED light bulbs inside, it was very difficult to try and get an LED light bulb with the heat sink on the back of it to fit into the, the cavity of the light. Okay. So I decided to go with the uh, 2829 lights, um, which gave me a little bit more room in there to put a proper LED bulb in there and give me a nice bright light awesome. when I'm driving at nighttime. You put a lot of thought into this. Place. Yes, it was a lot of thought and a lot of time and a lot of engineering that definitely went into the, putting this car together. It was uh, a very, very good learning experience, that's okay. for sure. Was this the first car you ever built? No, built no. I've built quite a few different hot rods. Uh, this was the first Model A that I've attempted to build. Right. And uh, a lot of trial and error. You know, I had yeah. some problems with my steering and getting the linkages and everything all to where I wanted it so that... The linkages were, were all operating smoothly and whatnot. Um, originally, I had exhaust uh, that came straight out the engine here and down the side of the car, and yes. it was just so loud. Okay. You couldn't even hear the stereo system inside the car. It was so loud. Now, with the provincial right. laws the way they are, yeah. things had to be quietened down. I was warned twice verbally by an officer that it was a little bit too loud, so I took it to a muffler shop, and I had Zorro do a custom stainless steel exhaust system, three-inch front to back, okay. off of a, a regular set of uh, tight block hugger headers. And uh, he did a beautiful job, comes right out the back, right where I wanted it. And uh, I still have a, a, a few things I want to do to it. Um, I did the interior and everything myself. I'm not an interior guy, you know, but uh, yeah, go ahead. You can open it up. I did all the panels and I put the carpeting and everything in there myself. And everything you see on the car was done by me right here in the driveway. Other than the exhaust system, which had to go to that the shop. pedal at the bottom, that is for the... Uh, one's features? for the gas, one's for the uh, brake, and the little one that's on the far left side is for my high beams. Right on. 
This is quite something. And look at the wood at the top there. Yeah, that's a brand new wood kit. It, uh, it came from uh, California. It's funny because that's Canadian maple that's in there. Really? And they get the maple from here in Canada. Take it to California. And then they take it to California. No kidding. They mill it all out. Then they send it to Florida. And then Florida sends it to me. Right. And by the time I get it, you're looking at almost a thousand bucks by the yep. time you get Pretty it here. Cool. But. Well, what is this uh, lever here? What is that? That's, uh, the windshield opens up. No way. So yeah, it actually flaps open. Yeah, that was the air conditioning back in the day, I guess. <laughs> and it is kind of handy. You know, um, That's there, a nice breeze coming. Yeah, you get a nice little breeze in it. And I generally leave it open about that much just to, just to get a little bit of airflow in the car, especially if you're sitting in traffic. This is like driving a toaster oven when you're oh, sitting in sure, traffic. Sure. There's no air conditioning in there. And uh, as you can see, I've got a fan clipped on my, one of my roof bars there to give me a little bit of defrost on the window in September when things start cooling off and we get those cooler afternoons. Right on. You know? The, uh, I love the uh, placement of the rear view mirrors too. Yeah, these the are. These uh, would have been that high up. Yeah, you could get two different style mirrors for this car. One of them was uh, one of them was uh, operated off of this hinge, and then you could get what was called a swan mirror that came up like this. All right. But it stuck out quite a bit further. Yeah. I do have a set of them, and they came out quite a bit further, and they were quite a bit lower. And I thought it would be better just to put it right up here on the hinge pin for the door, so I. I got this one. It gives it a clean look though. I think so. It does. And it gives me a nice view from behind too. Sure. You know, gives me a much nicer view from behind. I love the step stool too. I mean, yeah, I was undecided as to whether to put those on or not. I had them for a few years and uh, I actually bought them for my 23 Roadster. Okay. And wow. I put the hood on it last November. We put the uh, the front fenders on it. We connected into these are original 1930 steel running boards that are on the car. Amazing. The rear fenders are from Speedway Motors in Nebraska and the front fenders are from um, Eckler's down in uh, Florida. This particular body was sitting in a barn out in Saskatchewan for 65 years. And when I got it, it looked like the kids out there in the barn had been shooting at it with rifles. It was bullet holes all down the side of it. How did you even know it was there? Um, I was looking around, uh, uh, looking for a steel body um, to, to build another car. I bought a 27 Roadster and it wasn't in very good condition. So I was looking at putting another body on. And a gentleman uh, uh, had an ad on Kijiji. Okay. So I contacted him and he said, I don't have the car right now, but I know where I can get it. He said, it belongs to a friend of mine who's passed away. And uh, he said, right now, only the body is available. However, the entire car has been put away inside of a storage container. Really? So he like said, when... Like in a shipping container? Yes. Oh. So he says, right now, because of the will and everything that's going on with the fellow that died, he said, I can't get access to the rest of the parts, but I can get access to the body. Amazing. So I bought the body off him. And he had it shipped back here for me. And the rest is history. I actually just missed that before, but I like the gear shifter as well. That's kind of cute. Yeah, it's a really tall, really tall shifter. A lot of people think that it's a standard. Kind of gives it the appearance that it is, but... Uh, so it's actually an automatic? It's an automatic, yeah. Okay, here's yeah. the question. You're selling the car. Yep. Why are you selling this thing? Um, the, the COVID has really put a hinder on things. All the car shows have been shut down. The car is not being used right at the moment. Um, you know, it's it's not really a daily driver. Uh, I drove it back and forth to work for a little while, and holy cow, the gas was killing me. So, you know, it's uh, it's it's more of a toy to get back and forth to car shows and take out on your Sunday cruise. And right now, I've been working so many hours that I really haven't had time to enjoy it. So I thought I'd pass it along to somebody else if they're interested in it. Uh, I'm not in a hurry to get rid of it. This is my baby. Of course. You know, I'd like to keep it, but. If the right person, the right comes, person along, comes along that's got the same passion for me, you know, that I have for right it, on. then, you know, I'll, I'll let it go. First time I took it to a show, I went to uh, the Maltese uh, cruiser show here in, uh, in Mississauga. And uh, it took, uh, what did I get for that? Best in show. I bet. Best in show for this one. And my Roadster got the uh, People's Choice Award. Really? Yeah. So. Let's put out your fuel pump on it. All right. Oh man, that sounds sweet. It's got a performance camshaft in it. It's got that rumble to it, it's just beautiful. But it's All much right. quieter now with the exhaust on it. I bet, I bet. At least so I can hear my radio now. Let, let me mount this thing, we'll go for a quick car. Alright. <laughs> 